Much is being said about angels. There are, however, many misconceptions, even a complete lack of knowledge about their true nature and their actual tasks. Angels are an essential part of the Kabbalistic tradition. They play a very important role in practical magic and in the Western mystery tradition. It is therefore essential to understand their nature and their tasks well. We'll explain this in a moment. Brotherhood of the Eternal Light, Teaching the Western Mysteries In the Bible, angels are called Malach or Malachim in the plural. The word Malach in the Holy Scriptures is used for human messengers, as in Genesis 32.4, and Jacob sent messengers before him to Esau his brother. It can also mean celestial messengers sent by God, as in Genesis 32.2, and Jacob went on his way, and the angels of God, Malachi Elohim, met him. The English term angel derives from the Greek word angelos, the Greek translation of the Hebrew term, which in Greek also can be used for human or celestial messengers. Even though we often speak about angels in general, there are different angelic beings. We differentiate between choirs or hosts of angels and archangels. Choirs or hosts of angels are groups of angels which are assigned to a certain principle. For example, Hashmalim, who are assigned to the principle of mercy and the Sephirah Chesed. They execute different tasks in this domain. The Seraphim, who belong to the principle of justice and the Sephirah Gevurah, are all entrusted with tasks concerning the execution of divine justice. Angels are powerful entities since they are the correspondence of a single principle in its purest form. The angels of mercy, for example, are exclusively merciful. The angels of severity, however, are exclusively severe. They contain no mercy within them. The angels of the different choirs each have only one single task. They perform this and only this task in its purest form. They also correspond to this one principle. Thus, it is important to have a profound knowledge of the principles and the choirs of angels assigned to them in order to successfully use the power of the angel. If the goal is, for instance, to manifest healing powers, the angels of Tiferet must be asked for help in the appropriate way. If instead we called upon the angels of Gevorah, the Sephirah of the principle of power and karmic justice, then there would be no effect at best. Knowledge of the tree of life allows us to access the deeper levels of angelology and the entities of the inner planes. Archangels are more complex, higher beings who, unlike the lower angels, can embody more than only one principle. The term archangel cannot be found in classical texts. Archangels are called Malachi Hasharet, which means duty angels, in the Haggadah, the legends and stories of Judaism. In occult literature, we find terms like Shotarim, Wardens, and Sarim, Princes. Archangels and choirs of angels are assigned to the Sephirot on the Tree of Life. Within the four Kabbalistic worlds, the Archangels are assigned to Beriah, the world of creation, and the choirs of angels are assigned to Yetzirah, the world of formation. Angels are often differentiated as angels of fire and angels of snow. This corresponds to the polarity of power and form on the tree of life or to the mother letters Shin and Mem. In the Sefer Yetzirah, the concept of two opposed polarities can also be found in the Bible in 1 Kings 22 where it is written, I saw the Lord sitting on his throne and all the host of heaven standing by him 
on his right hand and on his left. Traditionally, Michael and Gabriel have been considered the highest archangels. Michael because of the Mem in his name, as the highest archangel of the form aspect, which is water or snow. Gavriel, since his name stems from the same word root as Gevara, is the highest archangel of the power aspect, fire. Thus, Michael has been assigned to Hesed and Gavriel to Gevara. Nowadays, many occultists see Michael as an angelic warrior and the archangel of fire, and Gavriel as the archangel of water, since he reigns over dreams. Therefore, Michael is sometimes assigned to Tiferet, or Hod, or even Gevora, and Gavriel is assigned to Yasod. Since they are more complex beings and have had many tasks and assignments over the course of the millennia, it is possible to invoke them in ritual work for their support in various tasks. By the way, this video is based on the 11th chapter, Angels in Kabbalistic Magic, of Salomo Baal Shem's book, Kabbalistic Magic, and on his educational material used in the training in Ritual Magic and the Western Mysteries of the Brotherhood of the Eternal Light. If you would like to study with us, visit our free online course. You will find the link in the video description. Now, let us continue with our study of the angels. Angels were created on the first day of creation. Through them, the divine will is proclaimed, and they are the builders of the lower material worlds. An excerpt from the book of Jubilees, chapter 2, verse 2 says, And the angel of the presence spake to Moses according to the word of the Lord, saying, Write the complete history of the creation. For on the first day he created the heavens which are above, and the earth and the waters, and all the spirits which serve before him, the angels of the presence, and the angels of sanctification, and the angels of the spirit of fire, and the angels of the spirit of the winds, and the angels of the spirit of the clouds, and of darkness, and of snow, and of hail, and of hoarfrost, and the angels of the voices, and of the thunder, and of the lightning, and the angels of the spirits of cold, and of heat, and of winter, and of spring, and of autumn, and of summer, and of all the spirits of his creatures, which are in the heavens and on the earth. He created the abysses, and the darkness, eventide, and night, and the light, dawn, and day. Since angels are pure beings, they have no Yetzahara, which means evil urge. They also have no will of their own, which means no free will, such as humans. Since their task as heavenly beings is only the proclamation and exertion of the divine will. Humans were created in the image of God, but imperfect. Angels, however, are limited to a very narrow part of creation. Angels are created to serve God, whilst man has the capability to decide this for himself. Humans carry within themselves the whole tree of life, with all of its principles, and can develop their soul and personality. Angels are limited to one principle, and archangels are limited to only a few principles. When a human being achieves a high degree of inner purity, the tree of life within him is in harmony. This is more than an archangel can hope for, and so humanity may achieve a spiritual degree that seems impossible for angels. Just as the Talmud describes it, the Sadikim, the righteous ones, are greater than the duty angels. One example of this is Hanok, who, after having lived a perfect life, was taken from this earth and was transformed into the Archangel Metatron, the highest of the Archangels. Angels are no unreachable beings. They are ready to support us if we ask them to. Since they would under no circumstances interfere with the free will of a human being, 
we must expressly ask for their help, since they also would not execute any tasks which they have not been made for, it is vital that we direct our request to the Archangel or Choir of Angels that is actually capable of helping us with our goal. If you want to learn about the assignments of the Archangels and Choirs of Angels that are commonly used in practical work, watch our videos about the Sephirot on the Tree of Life. Links are in the description. Additionally, our request must fit the high ethical standards of the mysteries and it must be compatible with the divine plan. If that is not the case, it is possible that we connect with lower forces to express our egoistic desires. By doing so, we harm ourselves and others. Angels and archangels in the Kabbalah are not visualized like Baruch Putti. The prophets of the Bible rather perceived them as energetic principles. They saw them as human or sometimes animalistic figures with energetic features such as many wings or even forces of nature such as fire, light, thunder and lightning. Some examples follow. Ezekiel 1.4 And I looked and behold a whirlwind came out of the north, a great cloud and a fire enfolding itself, and a brightness was about it. And out of the midst thereof, as the colour of amber, out of the midst of the fire. Daniel 10.6 His body also was like the beryl, and his face as the appearance of lightning, and his eyes as lamps of fire, and his arms and his feet like in colour to polished brass, and the voice of his words like the voice of a multitude. Ezekiel 1.6 And every one had four faces, and every one had four wings. Isaiah 6.2 Above it stood the seraphims, each one had six wings. In the practical magic work, they are often also visualized as great pillars of light or fire. The perception of an angel is connected to the feeling of great awe or the impression of great spiritual power. The symbolism of light, fire, lightning, thunder and wings are signs of a strong energetic force which is well absorbed by the conscious mind. Over many years they have become strong symbols that allow us to get into contact with the inner forces when we use them. With all perceptions of inner plane beings we have to remember that we perceive them with our inner astral senses. Thus it is crucial to understand the description of the biblical prophets or magicians of the occult literature in this way. It is always the inner reality that is being described in images that seem appropriate and are well known. They might appear real since our unconscious and conscious mind uses the images that are about and within us but it is always important to remember that we are dealing with an inner astral reality with perceptions of higher planes that have to express themselves in the garment of our plane. Be sure to also view our forthcoming video about the communication with angels and with inner plane beings. See you soon.